Hello, my name is Rafael Vigil and I would like to welcome you to my YouTube channel. In this video, I would like to show you a couple of my favorite lighting setups for my business headshots. This is one of the most requested videos, so I hope this video gives you all the information which you are looking for and it helps you to be more familiar with my lighting setups. Okay, before we jump into all the details, I would like to point it out a couple important things. First of all, lighting is only one of the components of creating a headshot. I've noticed that many photographers adopt this idea that lighting is everything. If I can get this amazing lighting, my images will look fantastic. That's not true. And just because you can get your lighting right, your images might still look like crap. I'm not going to go through all those additional elements, but besides lighting, we have also posing, face expressions, type of background, and of course, retouching process. And if we put all those things together the proper way, we can expect some great results. Second of all, just because I'm using these specific soft boxes or speed lights, it doesn't mean you won't be able to get similar results with other brands. Again, I know so many photographers fall in that trap and they buy everything what other photographers use. If you don't have any equipment yet, that's a different story. But if you have any type of soft boxes, some lights, you should be set. My setups are pretty straightforward and you can very easily copy them and use the equipment you currently own. So please don't spend money on something you probably don't need. Remember, it's all about the process and you can very easily make this work. Okay, let's jump into our lighting setups. For the last decade, I've been using the same lighting setups for all my business headshots with very small moderations, but it's pretty much exactly the same thing. I use two types of lighting setups. My favorite one, Rembrandt lighting, which is a bit more contrasty, and the second one, clamshell lighting, which is also sometimes called flat lighting. This type of lighting reduces the shadows on your subject face. I'm not big fan of it, but I use occasionally, especially for female headshot sessions. So let's start with the Rembrandt lighting. Typically, I'm using three light setup, main light, kicker light, and the background light. And that allows me to have a full control of every aspect of my image. For my main light, I use 39 inches Rotalux Deep Octa from Elinchrom with my Nikon SB910 speed light. For the kicker, I use much smaller 27 inches Rotalux Deep Octa with, of course, Nikon SB910 speed light. And for my background light, I use Nikon SB800 speed light without any modifier. My main light is either on the left or the right hand side, 45 degrees downwards, and it's about 1.5 meter away from my subject. Depends on your subject, you can adjust the light accordingly by either changing the power or physically moving the light, which I highly recommend it, especially if you want to make very subtle adjustments. The kicker light is on the opposite side of my main light behind the subject, 45 degrees downwards, and the distance is about two meters away. Again, you can change the power or you can move the light physically to make very small adjustments. To complete this setup, I use a reflector, which is placed right underneath my subject chest to create nice fill on my subject face. Typically, I use silver one, as that gives me a bit more puncher light. You can also use white one, but I found sometimes it's not enough. In this case, I use my 37 inches Lasto light reflector. And one additional comment I would like to add, make sure you have solid reflector holder, which allows you to put your reflector in the right position and angle it the right way. One of the last things you want to do is to make your subject hold your reflector. Your subject has to relax, and concentrate on the shoot, not on holding and positioning your damn reflector. I personally think it's just ridiculous that photographers even think that's okay, but that's a topic for another video. Okay, so what I like about this lighting setup. 
First of all, as I mentioned before, it gives me much more contrasty images, which creates this interesting dimension to my subject face. You have to be careful though with positioning the lights so you won't get too much harsh shadows as that will look way too dramatic and it doesn't look good, especially for business headshots. So that takes a bit of practice and playing with your lights during your session to make sure you can find the sweet spot. Every subject is different, so there is no formula which angle is ideal. You simply have to find out throughout the session what works best for your subject. Okay, let's move on to our clamshell lighting. In this case, I use the same soft boxes and the same speed lights. The only difference is the configuration. My main light is positioned at the front of my subject, downwards 45 degrees, and the distance between subject and the soft box is about 1.5 meter. In order to separate my subject from the background, I have a kicker light. Position either on the left or the right hand side, 45 degrees downwards, behind the subject and you can adjust it based on how much separation you require. In this case I also use reflector and I have to say the reflector is extremely important in that case. You want to make sure the reflector pushes the light onto your subject face. It has to be in the right place and you also want to properly angle it so the light doesn't bounce off and it doesn't reach your subject face. That's why you need a good reflector holder, which allows you to have full control over the placement and the angle of your reflector. Kind of obvious, but a lot of photographers simply don't pay too much attention to that detail. Okay, so let's have a brief chat about this type of lighting setup. I think this setup is extremely safe if you have everything set up the right way, you really don't have to worry much about shadows, ratios. It's a flat light which creates pretty consistent results and you can enjoy the shoot. That's why I think a lot of hatchet photographers out there using it for that purpose. I personally use that too, but my personal preference is the Rembrandt lighting, which creates a bit more dramatic and interesting look, but that's me you can shoot whatever works best for you and works for your clients. The last thing I would like to discuss here is the background. For many, many years, I used to use a gray paper, but a few months ago, I purchased this foldable fabric background for a company called Navir, and I have to say, I love it. And probably I will never go back to any paper background. The fabric one is super flat without any creases and absorbs lights very evenly, which allows me to create really nice vignette without using any additional modifiers on my background light. On the top of that, it's foldable and I can set this up within minutes using only one stand, so it's extremely convenient and I just really like how it looks on my images. Typically, I set up my background light about two meters away from the background to create this nice halo around my subject. The last thing I would like to go over, and this is something which is, in my opinion, extremely important, is the fact that it doesn't matter how perfect is your lighting setup, how expensive lighting or gear you use, the images still need some additional retouching process. There are always some flaws which needs to be addressed, adjusted, or fixed. Great lighting gives you only a good starting point and some good foundation to take your images to the next level. The reason I want to point this out is that I'm getting a lot of comments on my images stating I love your lighting, but that's not lighting itself. It was entire process which went into the image and I really want you to be aware of that so next time before you make any comments, I want you to really analyze the image. What kind of work was done to get this final look? I also think it's a really good exercise and training to your eyes. Anyways, I hope that was interesting. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to me. You know where to find me. Thank you again for watching. Stay tuned and I'll chat with you very, very soon. Bye-bye.